Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be looking at the top 10 weapons in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And I'm not going to be doing it alone. Yes, this time around I'm going to be joined by the disembodied voice of the wonderful Arix from Arix Gaming. Say hello Arix. Oh, okay, cool. Alright, yes. Hey guys, how's it going? It's good to be here. Thank you for having me back. There are so many weapons in Breath of the Wild that it can be hard to pinpoint what are the good weapons and what are the pretty pants weapons, and so we thought we'd make this little list for you. But beforehand, a few rules and a bit of a warning. Warning first, we are going to be talking spoilers in this game. Not story-based spoilers, but there will be spoilers gameplay-wise, so do please be aware of that. And if you don't want any spoilers, then please stop the video now. Don't just complain in the comments after you watch it because I've given you a massive warning, so you've been warned. Also, we do want to say that we are dis counting the Master Sword and the Hylian Shield because they are so obvious and overpowered that we thought, you know what, let's just knack us and not bother because what's the point, it's so obvious. We're doing more weird stuff, that's always good. But anyway, enough faffing around, let's get right into things. Next up, Korok Leaf. Ah uh, yes, I love the Korok Leaf. I mean, it's, it's pants in combat, isn't it? <laughs> well, it depends on how you look at it. It's pants if you use it in combat. However, however, right, if you look at it the other way around, say if you go over to your good old friend the Bokoblin and you shock him and make him drop his weapon and you then conveniently place a Korok Leaf and he picks it up, yes, it's pants in combat, but that's not <laughs> your problem because he can't do much damage with it. So in actual fact, it's really, really good. <laughs> that is a really good idea. I've not considered that actually at all. And also you can like you can use it to like blow bombs over to people as well, can't you, from a distance? Precisely, yeah, and especially considering, you know, I know that you are a huge fan of tying octo balloons to things. So you put down a bomb, <laughs> tie an octo balloon on it, cork leaf it all the way over, and you just sit back while it explodes at the enemy base camp. Like it is just a brilliant weapon. It's a bit annoying when it kind of takes up your inventory space and you need like better weapons, but very useful. It's more of a useful weapon than a good weapon, but definitely something that I always try and have with me. And that's why it's only at number 10. Exactly. Guardian Shield Plus Plus. Now, if you need a shield, this is one of the ones to go for. It is so shiny. I love, I love the lights. I do love the Guardian Shields. More than anything, I mean, it's got really good defense, but you know, it can still break. Um, more than anything, it just it just looks pretty. And I like the fact that it's not on your back. And so you, you sort of feel like you're phasing out the enemy. It's like, haven't got a shield, haven't got a shield. Whoa, did you expect that, you <laughs> sucker? But surfing on your shield, which is like my favorite thing in this entire game <laughs> with a Guardian Shield, it's basically like you're surfing on blue light. It is. It's 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 wonderful. It's like pimp my shield. <laughs> exactly. It's just it, there's something, and also I think the fact that they're so rare because you mean you can get the standard guardian shields, but they're much smaller, and the guardian yes. shield plus plus is that much bigger. It's gigantic, and I don't know quite how the hitboxes work, but I'd like to think maybe. It gives you more defense. I don't know whether it does, but you know, <laughs> it just gives you more coverage. And that just makes me a very happy man. Well, it definitely does have more defense than the other Guardian Shields in terms oh, of it just does, base yeah. numbers. Yeah, yeah. No, doubtless. And that's why it deserves a place on this list. Exactly. Moving on to the Ancient Bladesaw. Now, this is just super awesome because who doesn't want to wield a chainsaw? Indeed, indeed. I mean, it takes me back to the uh, the geekier days of my life, if you can believe that there are geekier days than now. <laughs> um, when I was uh, playing things like Warhammer 40,000, they had the chain sword and things. It's it's basically that in many ways, is, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, they, I mean, there's 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 a there's a chainsaw weapon in uh, Monster Hunter as well, or the chain sword as well. But yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like that. But also, you know, being a two-handed weapon, it's good for you know, it's got great damage output. It's good for obviously dealing with um, guardian type enemies anyway. Plus, it's Probably more special because, of course, you have to craft this one from the um, Akala Workshop, so it needs a little bit more effort, but definitely, uh, definitely a really good weapon to have. It's just, you know, good damage, um, good utility, and just looks really cool. And again, it kind of falls into what we said before about the Guardian Shield. It goes on your back, and it kind of hides half of it, so again, you kind of like look, at, like, you look like you don't have too much on your back. Yeah, <laughs> and if you want to go for a more sort of traditional Zelda look, you can get that without going for the Master Sword, but as we've said previously, we're not including the Master Sword, because that's cheating. It's too damn obvious. <laughs> What's better than a small boomerang? 
Um, I don't know, what is better than a small boomerang? Why, if you've been paying attention to the video, it's the giant boomerang! <laughs> <laughs> that I, thing. I love this thing so, so much. I mean, not only for the fact that it's a giant boomerang, but also it's a two-handed weapon, a bit like the, uh, was it, the ancient blade saw, and so you've got, you can do that swinging around thing, which is all mm. the most wonderful thing with two-handed weapons, but also you can throw it like a boomerang. And I just love the idea that this giant metal you know, th that thing has got to weigh how many kilos or pounds if you're in America? Too many, in my opinion. Um, and then you can just throw it as a boomerang and it comes back to you. And if you're quick enough on that A button, you can just pick it out of the air. And Link's like, it's no bother. It doesn't even drain my stamina bar. And there's something very reassuring about that. And OK, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it's a ranged weapon. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the thing is also like, yeah, I mean, ranged weapons like that are really, really useful anyway for, you know, going into enemy base camps. I mean, you know, if you don't want to kind of take the stealthy approach, you can still pick people off, especially if you, like, the, the ones you normally pick off, right, are the weak ones, the weak ones that sound the horns. So you can still use a boomerang to kind of dispatch them. Although you do still want to be careful because I have seen a boomerang being thrown and the enemy catching it. Oh God, really? I've not seen that yes. at all yet. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it with the giant boomerang, but I threw a Liz, I threw a Liz Alphos boomerang and the Liz Alphos caught it. That is genuinely quite scary. <laughs> um, it is. Do, do they have a weapon in their hand already? Nope, nothing in their hand. Okay, well there's the tip for the day. Don't throw boomerangs at enemies that aren't holding a weapon because they might grab it out of the air. That's genuinely terrifying. It is, it is. But it's not as terrifying as our next weapon, is it? No, next weapon is the Thunder Spear. Now this Well, you just spoils is... it for them. Ah. Oh. This weapon is probably one of my favorites. You do like you do like your your spears, don't you? I do. Yeah, you know what? Like I think again, the the only way I discovered these weapons, like I never would have even considered spears if it wasn't for the weapon degradation system, but the fact that I like at times during the game I was forced to use them they're now probably one of my favourite weapons. You know, they've got great reach, so, you know, for any, web any kind of enemies that have slightly longer reach anyway, it's good to deal with. If you use the charge attack, it's actually really good. In fact, I typically use spears a lot if I'm fighting Lionel, but Thunder Spear specifically, it's actually more durable than most other spears. Um, in fact, that goes for all of the elemental ones, the fire and the ice ones as well. Is it really? Yes, it is. It is. Yeah, it's actually got one of the highest uh, highest spear durability. So just and that's and that's just naturally without a durability bonus. So that's useful. However, on top of that, and I mean this doesn't actually this isn't actually kind of like exclusive to the thunder spear. This is also thunder great sword and sword. But if ever you play through the game and you're kind of doing shrines and you go against you know if ever you've kind of done of those minor, major, or moderate tests of strength and you have to fight the guardians, um, sometimes they're quite tricky. But with the thunder spear, every single hit. That's the thunder shock. It just it just shuts down the the guardian, so it just can't move. You just sit there and you poke it with a spear. It's like ah, and then you just kind of wait for the spear to recharge, and you just poke poke them again. And because they're durable, you'll probably find that you don't have to use any other weapon during that fight. So really, really useful. Um, and yeah, just an all round good weapon. You heard it here first, guys. Thunder spear is OP. Exactly. The Blizzard Rod, right. Now, we've already talked about Thunder, and I know that you're a big fan of Thunder, but me personally, I'm more of a fan of Ice. And I think it comes down to the fact that when you freeze someone with the Blizzard Rod, or even just the Ice Rod, or even just an Ice Arrow, or anything like that, it freezes them in place, and I found that as long as they're not, you're not in Garuda Desert or Death Mountain or something, they don't move, they don't break free, and I think that's wonderful, and the Blizzard Rod, it's just like, it's, it's just the best Ice Rod. You know, you just from a distance you try not to actually hit the enemy because it its durability is really poor and if you actually use it as a melee weapon it's even worse i don't know if you found yep. that with rods yeah they're pretty they're pretty awful as melee weapons but uh, you keep a little bit of distance and it just freezes them solid and you can go and kill some other enemies or if there's that's the only enemy you just shoot a fire arrow at them and they're dead or if you combine our, our number 10 weapon and you use a coracle leaf you can blow the enemy once they're frozen can you and then if you yep and if you blow them off a cliff they will then fall down and shatter there are so many things I still don't know about this game, and I think that's what's wonderful about it. It is, it is, it is. Exactly. I mean, this, this, you're always discovering new things. But no, I definitely agree. Blizzard Rod is a cool weapon. Oh, he went there. <laughs> I did indeed. Moving on to the Savage Lionel Bow. Specifically, specifically. I'm talking about... Yeah, specifically, speaking about 
the five shot variant. This is a rare candy. This is a shiny Charizard version, right? But they do <laughs> exist. There are, there are obviously, I'm sure a lot of you guys have encountered triple shot bows, really good anyway, because for any like multi-shot bow, it still only consumes one arrow, but you basically get one for the price of three or five. But five then you shot mean three bows for do the exist. price of one. That is exactly what I meant. Yes, yes. <laughs> Three for the price of one. But there are actually uh, five shot bows and the Savage Lionel bow is one of the kind of strongest bows anyway. And it's just like, it's, it's you know, it's an incredibly powerful bow. It's got good durability. So, you know, it will last you quite a while. They're relatively easy to come by because, you know, there's a lot of Savage Lionels, especially if you start marking them on your map, you kind of know when to revisit them. But if you're fighting big monsters later on, especially say Molduga, um, then you pull out your bomb arrow. You have five bomb arrows for the price of one. And it's just, you know, you, you'll do insane damage to the, to the monsters. You know, you stun people a lot. Easy to stun lock Lionel as well with bows. And a five shot bow is even better than that. So yeah, Savage Lionel bow, five shot is borderline OP. It's, it's a no brainer, isn't it? I mean, if you can find a five shot, then that is fantastic. But to be honest, even just the standard one is well worth getting your hands on if you can best a Lionel, which, um, it's not as straightforward as, you know, you might, you know, initially think. I mean, I found, you know, the first Lionel I took on was in Zora's Domain, and oh lordy, I was not prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> that was an amazing battle. That was, that was, you know, that was one of the few, few Lionel that I fought when I was, like, not supposed to fight it. It was so early, and, like, defeating it then feels, felt so much more satisfying than defeating one now. Yes, but you might have better luck if you defeat it using our next weapon, or then again, you may not. The Sheikah Bomb. Now this is a bit of a cheeky one because it's actually a rune, but I just love the fight. I think it's really underrated as a weapon from what I've seen of people talking about it online and just generally, well, talking about the game in general. No one seems to be using the Sheikah Bomb. And it's like, what are you even thinking? I mean, it's it's infinite. Obviously it will never break because it's not, you know, really a weapon in the traditional sense. You can use it to, you know, enemies get thrown off. You can get them to you throw them off a cliff essentially. And also it's multifunction. You can use it to cut down trees. And a lot of people seem to be ignoring that and using weapons and obviously they're breaking over time. I mean, you can use the Master Sword and that doesn't break, but then it's got to recharge. With the bomb, you just throw it. It just blows up, knocks a load of trees down. Then you throw another one, they blow up. You've got a load of wood. Straightforward. It is, yeah, it is a really good weapon. In fact, I discovered two very cool things about the bomb as well, right? One, I didn't realize it until I had to use it to solve a shrine puzzle. I never realized that it sees the spherical bomb as a separate item to the square bomb, so you can actually put down two bombs at once. You can indeed. I'm not sure whether I, I had a shrine where I'm not sure I needed it to do to, to complete the shrine, but I did still put two bombs down to send this big block shooting upwards. And uh, nice. good lord, did I shoot upwards when I put two bombs underneath? <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's like that's. I mean, that was really cool. But also another one of the dangerous things to watch out for. So like, I had a friend who was who like showed me a video clip. He was running forward and he dropped a bomb in front of a goblins, and then like he ran away from it and blew it up. The second time he dropped it, they got wise to it and they like kicked the bomb back at him. Did they really? So like they, they they learn like literally if you if you if you run forward and you just drop the bomb the first time they will be susceptible to anything but the second time you try and do the same thing they'll be like no 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 and they'll get you. That is incredible. We need to talk more it about is. this game just you know not even when we're actually doing a professional video with professional people on the professional internet. Exactly, professional. Professional. Just like our next weapon. This is a beast of a weapon, no pun intended because it does come from a beast, but it's the Savage <laughs> Lionel Crusher. This is, obviously the Lionels have different weapons, they either have Sword and Shield, Spears, or the Crusher. The Savage Lionel Crusher is also one of the highest damage weapons in game, it's around, typically around 78 damage, and it's also got pretty good durability, but being one of those big heavy two-handed weapons, of course, you know, you have the, your charge attack is the spin attack, and you combine that, like my typical combo for effectively one-shotting a Hinox or a Hinox. I, how do you pronounce that? I'm just I, I, I pronounce it Hinox, but uh, I'm, I'm, you know, not from London, yeah, so that's maybe, that's, maybe that's the difference. Either way, well, whatever, yeah, the, the, if, if I want to one-shot a Hinox, I go walk up behind it whenever it's sleeping. I spin around with a Savage Lionel Crusher. Having three bars of stamina means I can spin for quite some time. And then you let go, and then the slam triggers Obosa's Fury, and you can typically one-shot a Hinox before it even stands up. So this is an incredible weapon, but I only ever use it for that specific reason, because obviously I don't want to use it for general combat and have it get broken. What a shame you can't use it on Eventide Island. Oh, 
What a shame. Yeah, I could have done with that. <laughs> God, that's a good, that's a, that's a good shrine. But we've got one last weapon to look at, haven't we? And it's number one. What could it be? What could it be? I hope it's, uh, I hope it's the Korok Leaf Plus <laughs> Plus. <laughs> Okay, now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, this bow's a big crap. It's not very powerful, and you can find them all over the place. The only advantage is that it zooms in, and there is another bow that does that. It's the Sheikah bow. What's it called, mate? Remind me. The Ferric bow. The Ferric bow can do it as well. But the thing is, is that when was the last time you saw a Ferric bow? Whilst golden bows, you can just find them lying around everywhere, and they zoom in. They are a sniper bow, if you like. They don't do a lot of damage, but if you're doing, you know, if you want to attack from a distance, or you want to just, you know, just shoot something from a distance, if you're doing one of the Korok uh, seed things, you can't get a better bow than this. It does the distance. It goes the distance. It is the golden bow, and it is the golden child. And the fact that you can just find them lying around everywhere means that you never have to be without one. Exactly, yeah. I mean, like, this is that, this is incredible. I mean, like, I didn't even realize this before speaking to you about this today. Like, I, I was carrying one of these bows, and I didn't even realize that when I was firing with it, it actually zooms in. I mean, that is, I mean, it's, it's a genuine game changer because there are some useful times where, you know, you can, you can make other bows go further if you kind of arc the shots. But yeah, this is genuinely very, very useful for picking things off at range. Or again, there are some shrines where you have to shoot things like over a ravine to destroy like walls and stuff. And like, you know, it, it's, there's nothing better than using one of these because you just have that extra range. Yeah, and I also think that maybe even shoots arrows faster. I can't say that for sure. It might just be something due to uh, due to the perspective of being zoomed in and stuff like that. Um, but uh, I found that going against a guardian, if they're a distance away and they like to be, mm. just shoot them in the eye. There's nothing better than a golden bow. And if you can find a golden bow with multiple shots, you are, you are sitting very pretty indeed. And I think there's something sort of, because again, it's such a common item that is just so useful and offers such a great advantage over most other bows, you know, that makes it deserve yeah. the number one place, in my opinion, and I hope you agree. I would say, yeah, I would, I would say so. I would say it's, it's always so difficult when there's so many weapons to try and sort of like narrow them all down and everyone's gonna have a different opinion and different kind of things on what is important, but I would definitely say this is at least one of the number one items you should definitely always carry. It's gonna have, gonna have like maximum utility. And also going back to what you were saying about the faster shot, it's probably because this type of bow can roll with a speed shot bonus. So that's probably where, you, where that kind of comes from. That is entirely possible. And there you have it, the top 10 weapons that you can use in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, not including the Hylian Shield or the Master Sword. But that is not all. We've got another video going out at exactly the same time as this one over on Eric's channel, where we look at some of the most important general items in the game for general gameplay, not just weapons. So make sure you check that out. How can they check that out, Arix? It is linked down below, and it can also be on my channel, youtube.com forward slash G. Yes, indeed you do, and you can also click that card up there, which will take you directly to that video, and good lordy, is it a good one. You can also find Arix's channel by clicking the link in the description, and if you like this video, then why don't you leave a comment? It was nice, wasn't it? If it was horrible, I apologize. Thank you so much for watching, and once again, thank you to Arix for coming along. Thank you for having me, it's been awesome. Some good weapons, some good choices. If you like this video, then why don't you find out what weapons are best against that subscribe button, and be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>